All right, hey, I'm Scott from Dragon Innovation. And Nicholas Avril from Dragon Innovation. All right, so what do we have here, Nick? Here we have a part that comes from a Renault Modus. It used to be called a carburetor, uh, but it's not. And uh, Where did you get it? I get it from my car. Ah, uh, actually, I, I got it from the mechanics in my car. I had to pay uh, about 500 bucks for it. Uh, that's the price for installation of it. Uh, the interesting part that you know, why I asked for it is uh, this it looks very mechanical as a part. And mm. the problem was more electrical. I was getting this problem when it was humid and damp. Uh, would get a false reading about the injection, and then it would run fine. Um, I was curious why we see if it's, I have an electrical problem, why do I have to replace this whole part, and why can't I just remove the electrical part? And when we looked at it, we saw that there were six rivets on it, so obviously you cannot, hmm. it's permanently installed. Yeah, well, should uh, we pop the lid? Yeah. All right, let's see. I mean, we wonder why it's permanently installed. I mean, is it for, because you don't want it to ever move? Is it precision? Is it because there's a liquid inside? We don't know. I mean, we don't know. Yeah. So we're going to open it. All right, we'll pop open this mass flow sensor. Um, so, yeah, on the outside, basically, two parts. Looks like a pretty hefty um, casting of some sort. Correct. Die cast, maybe. Yeah, we, we see parting lines over we here. Some, there's quite a few parting lines. Yeah. Um, and then it looks like there's been some post-machining. Indeed. A couple areas. Uh, we've got this intriguing... Port. Uh, yeah, it's something, or something that's been epoxied over here. Yeah. Um, I right. tried to scratch it. Uh, did you find the gates on the? Oh the yeah. Part? So yeah, I think we'd found these pretty yes. massive gates over here. Yeah. Where and then the more metal would have flown in, and then some you know sorted witness lines that, that go with that. Okay. All right. So let's pop off the. All right. I haven't mentioned also is that why would there be rivets? Let me go a little bigger. Right, so obviously rivets are a permanent way to attach something, and if it's in automotive, you don't want it to come loose, so that's a sure way to, uh, to make sure that it doesn't come loose. Uh, another one that was brought up is maybe there wasn't enough space or enough material, enough meat to put screws in and to, put, to thread it inside. Could have make a, made a boss thing around them, um, but could be, we don't know. Um. Opening it up, and liquid, no liquid? You're ready, right? I'm ready, I'm intrigued. Right. No, no liquid. liquid. All right. Yes. Huh. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So what do we got going on here? Looks like a couple of gears. We've got a main pinion. Yeah. Then an idler. With a motor, you know. Oh yeah. Good size a, motor underneath. Pretty. Yeah. It's a pretty beefy motor in there. Yeah. And then a section of a gear that appears to be spring loaded, but yeah. Pretty beefy oh. spring in there. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, coils, which yeah. means it's probably going to be. Pretty um, uniform force. Okay, yeah, linear. And then. And, oh, another uh, one. We always see what this uh, screw was for. It's okay, so stop. there's an end stop. To adjust. Which it looks like it's going to let a little bit of flow in. Yeah. But then if the motor went the opens it, let's more flow. But if it goes the other way, it can it's going to completely turn it off. It, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and here's the other end stop. Yeah. And that's actually interesting because they must have done some post machining to be able to thread that. Correct. So you are machining here. You're also machining in this direction. You're machining here, oh, yeah, but you're not that. machining to put screws where the rivets are. Yeah, so maybe they did it to save cost. Yeah. Um, yeah. They didn't have to, to uh, tap it. Yes, because it could definitely, they were there, they were in the right axis. Yeah, it's interesting. You said the thing broke, and it appeared to be sealed. 
and as we look in here, we see in what the, appears to be a, a gland, uh, but there's no... Yeah, there's room for a seal, indeed. There's room for a seal, but there's no seal. Yeah. That, maybe, that's, maybe that's your problem. Maybe that could be the problem. Yeah, and it does seem, if we look in here, there's a little red oxidation, which may be the... Well, we see witness of oxidation also on that gear. So that gear could have rusted. Yeah. So that gear rusted moisture? a bit. Or some rust got into that gear. Uh, this doesn't look to be a stainless part, this sheet metal here. Right. Uh, so that could be what, what did rust. What, uh, I mean, we have some two cool holes, obviously, for the uh, power of the motor. But it's but funny, there's six leads, leads here. Yeah. And we have this. Ah, uh, and this doesn't seem to be a bearing surface. It doesn't seem no. to... Touch, is there a magnet in there? It is. Uh, what do you see? Yes, it okay. is. It is. Ah, so maybe that's some sort of a sensor or encoder? Indexing encoder. Indexing, not encoder, but yeah, yes. position measuring? Correct, because you want to know somehow you want to give feedback to where you are. Right. Oh, yeah, now that we look at it, I can see in here it appears there's some overmolded um, metal leads. Yeah. So maybe two of these peel off to power the motor, and then four of them are going to peel off. And they did a nice job right. of coring it out, so we Correct. can see... Keep, keep all your uh, wall thickness constants. Yes, in fact, they even tell us what it is. It looks like it's PBT with a 40% glass filled. So oh, yeah. Oh, PBT, I mean, well, it's uh, you're going to you know, test me as a chemist, right? Yes, so what's I PBT? I think it's polybutynyl terephthalate, something like this. I think you won. Uh, G fee 40%, that uh, GF. So, yeah, glass filled. Yeah. And EPs, it makes sense. We don't know. But yeah, I think if you glass fill it, you get up to about 200 degrees C, um, yeah. which would make sense because an engine's relatively you can get hot. Maybe the exhaust or yeah. the intake would. It's really good. It's a resin that's great for chemical resistance, which uh, and quite mechanically strong. Yeah. Now this one we don't know. This one doesn't have any marking as to the material. Uh, yeah, I'm intrigued that there's no gates on that. Like I would yeah. expect typically for a nice gear like that, maybe eight different gates. We see witness more for the ejector pins. They're very okay. light over here, but indeed we don't see gates here. There is slightly around the flange. Yeah, a, it's a little looks like a flash, but you think it could, hmm. with a microscope? We need a microscope. All right, next time we'll make a note. Get That's the right. get the dragon microscope. Should we get the motor out? Yeah, sure. Let's pull it out. All right, and we just have to keep in mind it could be spring loaded. Uh, that's all you right. see here, there's some interesting little features, maybe stamped into the metal, maybe independent. Yeah. Are they to hold the piece in place, or? Yeah, let's, we've got our safety glasses on. Let's find right. out. Through with this. It, it looks like it's gravity defying, so okay. maybe a spring in here. I'll put a finger on it. Oh yeah, I feel a little bit of pressure. Coming out. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, that's a nice motor. Oh, there it is. Oh, look, it's going on down there. Oh, maybe a little spacer. Oh, look at that. It's a wave spring. Hmm? That's awesome to tension it. Yeah. Um, so to keep it up. And yeah, that's really cool. Push it up and then. Yeah. Oh. Not a nightmare to draw when you, if you're not drawing in CAD. Right. Yeah, that'd be a bear. Okay, and then so this feels like a pretty slick motor. Probably just a brushed. Just standard. Standard brush motor. Oh, you know what? Uh, so these features, what's going on? Old. Yeah, they're doing the assembly of the motor. Yeah, somehow that snaps in. Oh, I it see. Holds it's, the body. it's the can. The can is these two fingers that come up, and then they must have a, a tool that pries them apart, and that yeah. holds it in place. Is there any number on this? Can we find out where that's coming from? Uh, non-generic uh, except for the AG13. Uh, the old AG13, yeah. But nothing, uh, nothing tell us. Because this one, I mean, you can see Denso, right. you know, the manufacturer of at least this part. Huh. Uh, well, I also noticed on this, there's a kind of cool feature as I was thinking about putting it together. So this post here is going to um, locate right there, and then right. there's a little um, uh, a rib, flange. yeah, a little flange that makes it sit 
them go together pretty nicely. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, slick. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So nice you can get it out. I know. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we need to. Uh, so next, we want to write that off because there's no way to take this apart. I mean, it's been molded in place, um, which is great for waterproofing. Yes. Well, it didn't work. There's rust. <laughs> well, other than the missing seal. Yeah. Uh, and then there's also well, we have this axis here with a pin that shows that. Yeah, that might be press fit in there. Maybe. Might have been. It looks like it's been. But uh, how does it that pin continues around? That clap or okay, that thr throttle plate. Yeah, and then on this side, I mean, I'm, we're guessing there's a bearing or something. Something to press fit in there. Yeah, and we're gonna have to grind that off because it's not meant to be open or removed. Okay. Well, we'll do a little homework and circle back. We take a little break. We get the tools, and then uh, we will come back. Perfect. Well done, sir. Yes. Well done, doctor. So we're back. We're back. So what did you do last night? Yeah, so I took this bad boy and put him on my belt sander to expose the electronic leads. As you suspected, looks like they were over molded. Yes. Which is pretty cool, like totally waterproof. Nice. And so and so we can see those two leads over here. So there were six leads, right? Yeah, so let's pop this thing off here. Oh, as you say, I have to pry it off. Do it in the center so we can see well. Okay. So right, so here's the two leads Contacts. for the motor. But it yeah. does have the six other pins, so that looks like there's four going over to the sensor. Yeah. There's some pretty cool stuff happening. I'm not sure we'd have why to study it's a little bit more. Right? Yeah, why are the gaps and what's going on in here? Yeah, maybe it's multidimensional and it's going oh, up or... Oh, well that's interesting. Maybe, yeah, maybe it does. It has to bridge something. Huh. Yeah, have... I mean, you can see a little bit of a shadow there. So yeah, maybe that is what's going on. That it, yeah. I should have grounded a little bit more. Well, I guess that would make sense because it's got to get down to this yeah. um, sensor here. So that was pretty cool. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's well done. It's well, well designed. And I guess they do need to know the position of the butterfly valve because right. otherwise when you press the accelerator pedal, you would have a lag until you sense that you need more oxygen or... Yeah, they could probably fine tune it. Yeah. And so. as you were getting at, maybe they can even... Um, lead the witness a little bit, so open it up, um, uh, having modeled the momentum of the airflow going through, right, so they right. can sort of anticipate. Which would be in the Renault Modus Sport version, which yes. is not mine, but... Well, next time. Okay, so <laughs> here right. we have... We did a little work. Uh, yeah, so... So we have the motor over here, we, ha we had looked at this, so we can take it apart now. Yeah. And we took the screws apart, so we had this motor over here, which... There was nothing wrong with it, so it should turn. We might try that later. Yeah, yeah. see what we got. And, and here we had this spring loaded. Yeah, so I drilled Actually. that out this morning. Okay, so we can now take this out. Carefully, yeah. All right, and so we have a quite an interesting spring, right? Yeah. And you could, you could take it out here, I guess, with your eyes. It's squeezed on pretty tight okay. to that uh, shoulder. So what? Why do they do this? Like you have a, two sections to the spring. Huh. It is it for like a... I wonder if it's harder one direction and easier the other, do you think? I don't know. Or, or is it to provide guiding of the spring? So you have a preloaded section over here with huh. a couple of coils and then this one is... Because this one does nothing. This whole second, this, those whole like four uh, mm. Loops are only there maybe to hold it in place, but maybe. you want a few of them so that it doesn't get overjawed. Yeah. Huh, yeah, maybe. Because this is not how, how is this centered on this spot? So now on this spot you ground it, and then we see a nice ball bearing. Oh yeah, so it's keyed. So there's it's got two flats on. Oh, ah, okay, so that's what it's. So yeah, so, and maybe there's some lead in that when but I rolled it out, it got um, destroyed. Yeah. So the key would position in the one way or uh, the this direction, but not this direction. Yeah. So uh, you're right. Well, maybe. Uh, huh. Some things we don't know. Some well, things we don't know. So and here, okay, we see the this press pin over here. Should we get this out? This yeah. Arbor? Let's get that out. Let's take it uh, off screen and we'll get our arbor oh, press. Yeah. But wait, wait, wait. Oh, hold on. You can. You're not going to be able uh, to right. get this out if we don't get the butterfly valve. 
out of the way. Okay. Uh, so we pre-drilled, we couldn't get those screws out uh, that are holding the, the two house. Right. Um, so we drilled them out, and now we can tap this centerpiece out of the way. Yeah, and I had pliers. Uh, oh, right yes. here, try these. Nice. See if those will do it. Stand back. Comes out. Oh, yeah, there you there go. It is. All right, so that was this part, which interestingly is not centered on the axis and was not, it's not closing, you know, perpendicular to the this axis. It's still a little bit tilted when it's closed. It's also a different material, which is intriguing. Yeah. Huh. Looks like bronze or something. Yeah, bronze. Okay, now we have this shaft, which is slotted in the center. It's interesting to find out what it is. All right, All right so let's so get to the elbow press. All right. Okay, so, returning from the arbor press. So, we have this, this nice axis, it's ball bearing, and on the other side, they didn't put a ball bearing. Look at that, that's just a, just a, a bushing, bushing, right? So it's well guided here, and just inside the bushing. I mean, it's not really spinning, it's just rotating a bit. Yeah, is there a lead-in here? Oh yeah, look at that. There's some lead-in to help it find its way. Okay. It's kind of cool. Uh -oh. And I don't know what's... I wonder where they slotted it. Yeah. Maybe it's, I mean, slotted in the same position. Maybe it was to hold it during... Because oh. Oh. this has been machined, right? The, the slot for that clap, or I don't know what right. the technical it name is. It looks like it's a saw that did it as opposed to an end belt, because I can see there's a little radius back there. So you would say that's a saw... Yeah, it's, it's, it's not... It's, it's not, not ground, it's not a cutoff, it's too thin to be a cutoff. Break off? Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's either mill or saw. Yeah, I'm guessing they had a saw a little bigger diameter than this that must have come down and okay. got it. Nice, and then we have, down the bearing. we have this bearing, so they had to machine this area. And um, yeah, we pretty yeah, much tore the whole thing down. Much, very metal. Cool. Yeah. Just a screw here and a pin there. Well, good work, Doctor. Well, you, well uh, done. Well, I'm happy. Uh, thank you for operating. You're welcome. Thank you. It was a thank pleasure. <laughs>